Shalom. A few days ago on his show, Jon Stewart gave a wellness check at the six month mark of the Gaza war. He points out times where America stands for values, uh, but when Israel violates those values, America doesn't call them out on the violations as they do, for instance, for Russia, when they violate those values. Many of the violations that he accuses Israel though are not factual. The running error throughout Jon Stewart's points is the lack of complexity that he recognizes in the war. His comments on, on the results and the effects without examining the causes of those effects. It's a simplistic approach meant for TV sound bites and comedy shows pretending to be commentary or commentary pretending to be a comedy show. But it isn't serious, it's dishonest and it's misleading. My name is Ray Polchowski, I'm an educator on Israel and a rabbi. And in this video, I'll strive to explain, as an educator, the nuance that John Stewart has. The other big milestone from the eclipse is, as Ronnie mentioned, the war in Gaza is now six months old. I think time for a wellness check. But as the war has grinded on, justice is beginning to seem more like cruelty. But not to worry. America, the shining city on a hill, is on the case with our universal values. In the great battle for freedom between a rules-based order and one governed by brute force, in this battle, we need to be clear-eyed. And just to clarify, we are the freedom folks. We're the rules people. We're not the brute force ones. I think we all know who the brute force ones are. In this case, Vladimir. And know that America will call you out when you violate the basic tenets of humanity. Weaponizing food, using it as a tool, as a weapon in its war against Ukraine, it's unconscionable. Uh, should not happen. It's unconscionable. Weaponizing food in Ukraine is not kosher, nor halal. <laughs> Sorry if I'm both sides in this. <laughs> Speaking of which, there is a literal famine in Gaza caused by the war. I assume America will also consider this unconscionable. Absolutely, we're concerned about that. No question about it. Well, you can't spend, spell unconscionable without concern or at least part of it, the CON part. You can reuse the CON, you get the point. Let's uh, answer John Stewart's points. First off, there isn't a famine in Gaza. Pro-Hamas NGOs, non-government organizations, are saying that there's a famine, but videos and pictures come out every single day, including the day of John Stewart's show, that have tremendous amounts of food throughout all of Gaza. There are people that are hungry, and Israel sends over 400 trucks of food a day into Gaza. But Hamas steals it. There are videos of this. And they sell it at inflated prices, and the people in Gaza can't afford it. No country is willing to stand inside of Gaza and police the handout of food for obvious reasons. It's easy to blame Israel for the situation, but the lack of food and the lack of distribution of food isn't on Israel. It's on Gaza. How about the free press? Ordinarily, we are strongly in favor of free press. We also condemn the Russian government's continued targeting and repression of journalists. You hear that, Russia? We condemn, in no uncertain terms, any repression of a free press. Uh, I think you all know what's coming next. <laughs> More journalists have been killed in Gaza in six months than anywhere else in the world, and a new Israeli law says they can ban media outlets they consider a threat. So as it relates to Al Jazeera, Zero specifically, we've seen the reports. If it is true, if it is true, uh, a move like this is concerning. Oh, we're concerned again. <laughs> How about if it's true, we condemn it? And by the way, is it true? Like, it feels like you could probably just call someone and be like, is this true? <laughs> and if they're like, yeah, it's true, you could be like, that's concerning. <laughs> Not condemning, but concerning. Gaza, Hamas, and Palestinians are well known for anyone just slapping on a jacket that says press on it and calling themselves a journalist. Even terrorists do this. Yes, believe it or not, the same people who will put suicide vests inside a ambulance cynically with a cancer patient will also fake being a journalist. Ask yourself this question. Why hasn't any major news media outlet shown one of their own journalists that have died in the conflict if so many journalists are dying? There's something fishy there. 
In response to the Al Jazeera spending a week spreading a false rumor that Israeli soldiers are raping Palestinian victims, something which, after a week, they apologized and took, and took back and said that the woman that they had interviewed that made the accusation had made the whole thing up, Israel passed this law to prevent dangerous situations occurring because of false reports. It still hasn't banned, banned any media outlets. It just passed a law allowing it to. Even Al Jazeera is still operating with inside. You know, perhaps these are just peripheral issues. What about the bedrock rule of international law? No taking land by force. When Russia does it, we're pretty clear. The entire world has a stake in making sure that no nation, no aggressor, is allowed to take a neighbor's territory by force. The American people will never waver in our commitment to those values. Ish. See, this is where Israel's actions get interesting. Because you might say Israel's war is different than Ukraine's. Israel is responding to an attack and a hostage crisis. But in the midst of that, they pulled a little something in the West Bank on March 22nd that might be notable. As the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, made his latest visit to Israel, the Israeli government announced that it was declaring state land, nearly 2,000 acres of land, in the occupied West Bank. This latest Israeli appropriation is the largest land transfer since the Oslo Accords were signed in 1993. 1993, and that's not even Gaza, that's the West Bank. So you can't say it has anything to do with defending yourself against Hamas. Let's see if America upholds its rule against taking land. I haven't seen the specifics of this, but uh, anyone taking steps that makes things more difficult, more challenging this time, is something that uh, we, uh, we have a problem with. You don't know about it. They did it the day you visited. Notice how in this clip, John Stewart didn't say who Israel took the land from? That's because Israel didn't take it from anyone. The land in question is between a, t a city called Mali Adumim and a small town called Kedar. Mali Adumim is an Israeli city of 45,000 Jews. It's 10 minutes north of Jerusalem, Israel's capital. The nearest Palestinian is a few miles away. There was no land grab, Israel didn't steal any land, and in no way could this be compared to Russia's land grab of Ukrainian land, another sovereign country. Why do we tiptoe around on eggshells? They slap America in the face, and our response is, well, if anyone slapped us in the face, it'd be concerning, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, raising a hand to a delicate body part of the face, if true. <laughs> The verbal gymnastics that the American government must undertake so as not to offend the delicate sensibilities of a country we provide most of the weapons for is... Yeah! <laughs> Every time America tells the world that there's something we won't allow, Israel seems to say, challenge accepted. <laughs> Are they willfully trying to provoke us? Or perhaps they're just reading our principles from right to left. It's... Ups <laughs> it's over! Um, it's really, to be honest, it's kind of a bar mitzvah joke, but... Uh, <laughs> In the previous clip, John Stewart had made the claim that Israel purposely ignores America's uh, claims against it. But these aren't American claims, they're John Stewart claims. He doesn't like the results because he doesn't understand them. His lack of understanding comes because he doesn't do any research. Do you think he's ever heard of Mali Demim or could point it out on a map? He hears sound bites and reads headlines and assumes he understands the situation. He doesn't. Over 30,000 have died in Gaza since the war started. Some of them Hamas soldiers, 13,000 of them children. Our response. Since the early hours, we've been urging our Israeli counterparts to act with as much precision as they can in their targeting. Our constant efforts to urge the Israelis to be as precise and careful as possible, we can still continue to urge Israel to be more careful and more precise. The need for the Israeli defense forces to act with precision. We continue to, 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 to work with the Israelis to make sure that they are as precise as, cap as they can be. See, they're not listening. Have you tried synonyms for precision? We continue to stress to our Israeli counterparts that they be as discriminant and careful in their targeting as possible. Be as cautious and deliberate and as careful as they can to be more careful and more deliberate. Be very deliberate in the most discreet, deliberate, careful, cautious way possible. The utmost care. A special burden uh, to be mindful. To be mindful? What is this, 
Hot yoga? <laughs> we just, you know, we've seen the bombing and we are urging Netanyahu to be present. John Stewart claims that 30,000 Palestinians have died, including 13,000 children. And Israel isn't being precise enough it's in, in its bombing. And America isn't saying anything. But these aren't real numbers. They're Hamas numbers that Hamas announced themselves this week that aren't precise and are off by over 30%. In this war, Israel has the lowest combatant to civilian kill ratio in the history of any military and any conflict in the history of the world. America isn't saying more because they know that Israel has done the best of any military at keeping civilian deaths down to a minimum, especially when compared to America, which had a nine to one combatant to civilian kill ratio. That's the reason why America isn't criticizing Israel here, because Israel deserves praise for how careful it's being. Yes, it's tragic. Civilians have died, but that's not what on What are we doing here? The subtext of all this is America knows this is wrong, but it apparently doesn't seem to have the courage to say it in a straightforward manner. America and Israel both know that you cannot bomb your way into safety. We learned that lesson in Iraq and Afghanistan. They learned it in southern Lebanon. They laid siege there, occupied the southern area for 20 years. All it did was birth and strengthen Hezbollah. And they're about to do it all over again, and we are letting them. Real friends take the keys because friends don't let friends bomb that much. <laughs> and after this recent week, with so much horror, perhaps America finally finds the need for a new approach with Israel, with more justice and less cruelty. The U.S. and Israel are closing in on what would be their largest weapons deal since the war in Gaza began. Well, I don't know about you, but if that's true, I find it concerning. In that previous clip, John Stewart said a lot that needs to unpack. First, he said that America knows that what Israel's doing is wrong, but won't say anything. He says that Israel can't bomb itself to safety, and that Israel learned that in the Lebanon war when its bombing birthed Hezbollah and grew Hezbollah, and Israel should stop bombing, and that real friends stop friends from bombing, meaning America should stop Israel from its bombing campaign in Gaza. Now, the truth is, it's precisely because America knows that Israel isn't doing anything wrong, that Israel's transferring aid and food, that it hasn't actually stopped the free press, and that it hasn't taken any Palestinian land, and that it's doing an exemplary job of protecting civilian life, that America isn't saying anything critical of Israel. Stewart claims that you can't bomb your way to safety, and that Israel learned that in Lebanon, when it bombed Lebanon, and Hezbollah seems to have been created because of that. But actually, Israel was the one being bombed and before it bombed Lebanon and after it stopped bombing Lebanon. During the time that Israel was bombing Lebanon, during its occupation, so that was the only time that Israel itself was safe. When you're protecting your homeland from people bombing it, which is different than Iraq, it turns out that bombing your enemy before they bomb you is actually an effective way of keeping yourself safer, contrary to what Stewart thinks. John Stewart claims that friends don't let friends bomb, but friends do let you bomb savage terrorists who kidnapped, raped, and murdered your people, and promise to do it again. That's why America isn't stopping Israel, because America is Israel's friend, and it knows Israel's hurting, and when friends see their friends hurting, they stand by them and support them. As a few final words, the underlying issue with John Stewart's wellness check is that he's only looking at the effects of war and not the cause. If he just realized that Hamas is preventing the Palestinian people from receiving food that Israel's sending, that they're placing their people as human shields in front of Israeli bombs and soldiers, and that Hamas is refusing to give up the Israeli hostages, he'd see that he shouldn't be doing a critical take on Israel, but a critical take on Hamas and their treatment of the Palestinians in Gaza. I'm Marie Pilachowski. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Shalom.